Higher Universe Pictures. Welcome to the Paranormal Phenomena Podcast with Brandon Rhinus and Elizabeth Chamberlain. I'm Brandon Rhinus. And I'm Elizabeth Chamberlain. Welcome to the Paranormal Phenomena Podcast, where we talk about ghosts, aliens, and the unexplained. On today's show, we're talking to Tracy Adkins, author of the book Ghosts of Athens. Tracy has had paranormal experiences of her own that we get into, as well as her thoughts on the field in general. If you like our podcast, be sure to subscribe. And we'd love it if you could like, share, and comment on our show. Those likes go a long way in helping us reach a wider audience, and we really appreciate that. Today we have Tracy Adkins in with us. She is an author, as well as she has some uh, uh, paranormal experiences of her own. So Tracy, before we get into your book, I understand that you have your own paranormal experiences. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, you know, so when growing up, you know, I didn't have any kind of interest in the paranormal or ghost stories or anything like that, you know, and I was kind of in that camp of people that, you know, kind of don't give any credence to that. And, you know, if somebody said, oh, well, this weird thing happened to me, you, you know, you immediately think that either they're making it up or they misunderstood or something like that. But, um, you know, I got into my college years and I started experiencing some weird stuff and I kind of had to back up a little bit and say, okay, you know, there may be some things going on, you know, where not everything can be explained. And um, one of the ones, you know, that happened in that time that that really convinced me to, um, you know, look into this idea further was um, I was about 19 years old and um, I was working at a movie theater. And this was kind of in between schools. I'd gone to one college for a couple of years and then I was transferring to go to a different college to finish up. And I had moved, you know, back home, you know, in between to, um, you know, just for the summer. And so working at this movie theater and all of us that work there, you know, we, we finally started talking to each other and we're like, you know, there's weird stuff that goes on here. Um, and uh, it would be things like um, doors would open and close on their own. And um, especially this one, one bathroom uh, at the theater and that door would open and close or just kind of open and bam, you know, shut real quick. And the light in that, um, in that bathroom, like if uh, the shows were all done and we'd go clean in there and turn off the light and come back out, you know, and so nobody else was going to be in there, but that light would come back on. And, um, you know, so we would just, all of us as the owner and the manager and another girl that worked there, and I, and we were all just kind of talking amongst ourselves, like, have you, you know, witnessed any of this weird stuff going on? And I, yeah, yeah, you know, I've had weird stuff go on too. And uh, one time the uh, manager and I were cleaning up the theater after all the, you know, after the shows let out. And um, it was just him and I in that theater. There's nobody up front, you know, we were the only ones, we're just cleaning up. And um, we got down towards the very front of the theater, you know, right near the front rows, and we're cleaning up. And uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but in movie theaters, they'll have these curtains on the, the, the walls that are, like, really tall and, like, really heavy. Mm-hmm. And um, that curtain, it l- lifted up off the side of the wall and, like, touched the ceiling and then slowly came back down. <laughs> and, you know, my manager and I were just staring at it. And he turns to me and he's like, you saw that, right? (laughs) How can I miss it? (laughs) And, um, you know, so that, after that, you know, I mean, I saw that thing physically do something that, you know, it wasn't supposed to do. And so I, you know, I was determined that, okay, you know, I, I have to figure out, you know, why did I witness this and what's up with other people that witness weird things too. Mm -hmm. Um, and then towards uh, towards the end of my time working at that theater, um, at the end of one uh, evening, and like we'd done all the cleaning, you know, everybody was gone, all the lights were out, we were about to leave and go home. And the four of us were standing in the back room and talking about, you know, some of the weird stuff. And uh, all of a sudden we heard this noise and we opened up the door and that the door to that bathroom that was weird, it was just slamming, slam, open, slam, open, just like bam, bam, bam. And so 
we just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that's another thing. It's like, I mean, you know, there was nobody over there. So wh what is the explanation for that? It was just very intriguing. That's actually kind of odd. You mentioned about the slamming door. Our first guest that we had on the show, Morgan Knutson, she was on an episode of A Haunting that I watched. That's how I first found her. And one thing that she said happened to her and her roommate in their apartment was the door. It was like for a good, I can't remember how long, but a good chunk of the night, it would just slam open, slam open. I wonder why that, like why that's a paranormal event that seems to happen to, to more than one person. Uh, any thoughts on that? You know, I kind of, my theory is that, you know, whatever, whatever these, you know, things are that are, are doing these things, physically manipulating things around us, that uh, potentially there's some things that's easier for them to do than others. And I think, that, you know, opening and closing doors might be one of the easy, easy ones. So, you know, if they're trying to get someone's attention, that's kind of the go-to thing. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I mean, door, it is an action that's done many times per day, opening and closing a door. Doors are relatively light, so they're not hard to push. Lifting up a curtain, that's not something that's done very often, and it's probably pretty hard to do, so you don't hear about that very often. But yeah, the doors, every you know house in the world pretty much has doors in it, so I guess yeah, maybe that stands to reason that would be the, the uh, reason for it. So, um, so in your opinion, do you, do you think this is like an intelligent entity doing doing this thing? Or do you think it's some other type of phenomena? I think it can be. Um, I think that, that sometimes these are, are entities that, you know, have some kind of sentience to it, you know, that are interacting, you know, with us. And I think sometimes it's just like a place memory where, um, you know, somehow there's, uh, you know, like a recorded memory you know within that place where just kind of the mm -hmm. same thing happens over and over again yeah i've heard that i've heard that theory quite often that it's like leftover residual energy from something that's happened a lot like a recording in a you know on a drive or something i think right. that that makes a lot of sense yeah especially if there's a lot of emotion involved with you know whatever the event is um you know and i know you didn't want to talk about the book yet but uh, just as a, <laughs> there's a place that's in the book and um it's a historic house that's a museum now. And, you know, even to this day, you know, they have reports of stuff going on there. And one of the things that a lot of people report, I mean, even going back decades, is people that are outside the house, or sometimes inside, will see a man on the staircase, like kind of going up the stairs and coming down and check his watch and go up and down. And it's like he's worried or like preoccupied. And so, you know, there's a story related to um, the family that lived in that house about a man who had a, a tragic event. And so the theory is, you know, he was, you know, pacing the stairs when that tragic event occurred, you know, in his life. And so that just kind of got imprinted on that stairwell. Yeah, I find that very interesting. I've even heard stories where some of these things that are imprinted, it's not, not even necessarily from someone who's dead. So it's from someone who lives on the other side of town in another city. Mm -hmm. It's just somehow the world divides or the dimension divides combine or what i'm not sure what the you know the um scientific reason behind it is but it's just some sort of um anomaly like that where you just see some repeated image um whether or not it's intelligent or there it's i mean that's still it's been in speculation for you know hundreds of thousands of years now of what exactly it is but i think sometimes people are too quick to jump to the conclusion that it's a dead person used to live in the house <laughs> um, and, and perhaps maybe sometimes that's what it is, but I think sometimes I think it's beneficial for everyone with an interest in this, um, in this field to kind of look for alternate explanations. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Be skeptical. Look for the, you know, normal, rational explanation first, you know, and when you've ruled all of that out, you know, then look at things that you know, potentially, you know, we don't, we don't have all the answers. I don't think we have all the tools to get all the answers right now, you know, but I think the important thing is for people to have an open mind enough to say, we don't have all the answers. Yeah. But not so wide open that, you know, every door that slams is a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it seems to like, yeah, I guess at, at this point, we don't have the answers. So is there anything really that we could do beyond record, you know, make documentation of the event that happened 
and speculate about what the reason might be. Like there's, it's kind of frustrating that there's not even a way that we can solve this. I mean, people can come, come up with theories and there's no way to prove them right or wrong. Um, and I think a lot of, that's a, a reason that a lot of people are just skeptical because, well, it's like, well, why would I even bother believing in it? There's, there's no way to, to prove what, what it even is. It's easier just to be like, eh, it's, you know, something you imagined. It's, it's just easier to live with that way rather than have to acknowledge that these things exist and we have no idea what they are. It's kind of scary to live with that kind of, um, <laughs> that kind of uncertainty and doubt. It is, but, you know, a lot of people have these experiences. And so, you know, at this point, it's, it's kind of taboo to talk about these things. And so, you know, when I'm, you know, trying to collect interviews and do that kind of thing, I always have to reassure people that, you know, their real name won't be used if they don't want me to, and that I'm just trying to, you know, collect these stories. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a hurdle to get past is people not wanting to talk about it. But part of, you know, my wanting to do a book at all was to show that, you know, it's okay to talk about having these experiences. I mean, I feel like we've got to break through this taboo so we can get more data to understand what the heck is going on. You know, if nobody will talk about it, we're never going to figure it out. Exactly. I, th I think a lot of the stigma is beginning to kind of lift. I don't know if maybe the, the kind of the quote ghost hunting shows that, you know, I'm not, I'm not always a fan of, but, but maybe they're kind of making it a bit more mainstream so that people aren't going to be so fearful of being judged because well everyone else is coming forward with their story so I can too and you know you're probably not going to lose your job just because you claim to have seen a ghost you know I think people are a bit more accepting these days but I think there's still a bit of I mean personally I've never really had an experience but if I did I would really question whether or not to tell anyone and I would pick, I would pick select people who I trust to tell some people I would never mention it for that exact reason right I, I don't want to face the ridicule of uh you know, people thinking that I made the thing up or that I'm insane. Um, right. So, right. Um, so yeah, I understand it must have been difficult uh, with your book or was it difficult with your book to find people willing to open up? Well, it's interesting. You know, I had two different experiences with, with two different books. Um, you know, The Ghost of Athens, you know, was the first book that I did. And, you know, people were very eager to participate and gave me great stories, you know, and when I'd interview them, they'd say, oh, you should talk to so-and-so or go check out this other place. And, you know, I got a lot of leads to move forward and, and collect a lot of good stuff. And it was a really, you know, positive and awesome experience. Um, and then I started to work on a book about another place and nobody wanted to participate. They were like, well, you know, I have an understanding with my ghost and I don't want to talk to you about it. <laughs> or, you know, or they'd agree to an interview and then they back out at the last minute. That happened 50, 100 times. And so it's like, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I have an understanding with my ghost. We have a contract. <laughs> that happened way more than one time. I was like, Whoa. Okay. <laughs> But, you know, I guess they don't want to do something and then the ghost starts misbehaving, so. <laughs> Maybe there's kind of a fear, too, depending on how negative the experience was. Maybe they're worried that talking about it will just stir it all up again and they kind of just prefer yeah. to, I just want this to be in the past and, you know, if also we start talking about it again and it just starts acting up again, maybe that's the reason. It's possible, you know, and, and there are a lot of reports with people that, you know, once you kind of open yourself up to the idea of that kind of thing, that you are more likely to have those things happen, you know, and so I think some of that is self-fulfilling prophecy, and some of it is just, you know, I don't know, just having a, an awareness and an openness to that kind of, of realm of whatever's going on around us. I could also see somebody not wanting to share if they had like a personal connection to the spirit to which they were talking to, you know, if it was like their dad or something like that might be a, a reason they might not want to share. It might get a little personal and private, you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Sorry, so uh, were there, any, were there any other experiences that you could share with us? Um, let's see. I, you know, most of that stuff that went on that summer was, you know, my brother lived in a house that had some strange stuff going on. 
And uh, then, you know, after I, you know, moved to Athens to finish school, you know, I had some weird stuff going on, but it was never like this big concentrated, you know, like every day kind of thing. Like it was, you know, that summer that I lived there. Um, but um, I'd say now about 15 years ago, I moved into an apartment that, um, it was a restored kind of historic house and they had done an interesting thing. They'd made a, it was a duplex, but instead of having, you know, one downstairs and one upstairs, they'd split the house down the middle. And so one apartment was in the front and one was in the back. And my, I moved into the apartment in the back and like they had just remodeled this thing and it was, it was gorgeous. You know, everything was, you know, new and pretty and shiny. And um, when they remodeled it, they took out, one of the floors on the uh, the second floor so that the living room had like 20 foot ceilings you know it just went all the way up and it was windows all the way around and it was really pretty <clears throat> and so I was so excited to, to be in this place until weird stuff started happening and um, I noticed that um, I would be woken up by this uh, hearing this conversation and it was almost like they were trying to be quiet but they weren't doing a good job and from where, where it seemed to be coming from I thought it sounded like somebody out in the driveway which is right on the other side of those big windows in the living room so I thought well the neighbor you know my neighbor in the front duplex will go front apartment he must be walking down the driveway next to the windows and I can just hear him talking to somebody but this happened over and over and over and you know I, by the time I would get up and look I, you know I couldn't see him out there you know there's the windows I would see him if it was him and so it just got to where it bothered me and so when I would hear it you know and it would wake me up and I would jump out of bed and like look over that wall and like look out the windows and I could never I could never catch whoever it was and I was just so frustrated and finally I figured it out I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not hearing this out in the driveway. I am hearing this right next to me where that room used to be, where they removed that floor. It's somebody in that room talking. Wow. <laughs> the room's oh. not there anymore. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. I just, you know, it wasn't the greatest answer, but I was just glad that I had figured out what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also in that apartment, you know, in that, that top, that loft part, like sometimes when I would try to go to sleep, it was I'd lay down on the pillow and it would sound like there was a radio in the pillow, you know, and like like the old kind of radios that like, you know, flip through the channels and you hear little pieces of different stuff. And I'd sit up and then I couldn't hear it, and I'd be like, whatever. And I'd lay back down and then I could hear it. And I find I was like, oh my god, this sounds like it's coming from the pillow. And so that apartment. <laughs> was a little freaky <laughs> that's scary i find radio so freaky i don't know why i just like i'm a, like radios are freaky man well i think there's something to that as well you know we were talking about why do they open and close doors because it's easy and i think that you know there's something too i don't know what it is about the electrical component of that i think that they have a means to manipulate that kind of stuff as well yeah. and so if they're trying to get attention they're either going to turn it on and off or you know interrupt the song and you know try to get something out and um i've even heard some weird stuff about um people getting uh, phone calls and text messages from people they know that have passed on mm. and then randomly they'll get this weird message so i mean i don't know what it is about you know electronics but yeah there's something to that i wonder if the ghosts are ever gonna kind of get more modern and start you know hijacking zoom calls <laughs> <laughs> you know that would be great especially if you know it's being recorded and then you know there you go <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great uh, addition to our podcast that would probably uh, yeah. increase our listenership by a lot <laughs> <laughs> just bring the dead in to interview you just like hey <laughs> Um, so did you ever find out these voices you were hearing? Did you ever find out who who it was? No, I, you know, I, I didn't, I don't know anything about the history on that place. Um, I've, I tried to get in touch with the, the company that, um, the, you know, rented that place out because they remodel and rent out a lot of historic houses, but uh, they don't seem to be interested in talking to me. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like we say that, uh, that happens. So did this did this continue happen? Did it stop at any time, or did it just stop when you moved? 
yeah, shortly after that, I, I moved and uh, I never experienced anything like that again. So, you know, it was definitely the police. Yeah, I've heard, uh, you know, I've heard stories that sometimes people are haunted and no matter where they move, the phenomena follows them. Other places, it's, it's the building itself. And if you move away, you're fine. And whoever else moves in, they're going to start experiencing yeah. right, the thing. Yeah, so, I uh, think both ways, yeah. Um, in fact, um, Morgan, I think she's on, uh, she, she's on uh, Paranormal 911. Yeah. Which you know, I'm a fan of all of those kind of shows. And, you know, it always creeps me out when they have those where, like, first responders, or, you know, firemen or uh, ambulance drivers, and they'll be on a call where somebody passes away, and then they get home, and there's that guy that died, you know, earlier that day, and that just totally freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, that would, um, I don't see, after having something like that happen, I don't know if I could do the job anymore. That must take a lot of... Um... <laughs> Yeah, like no doubt. <laughs> courage to be able to continue with that. And also, too, like, do you ever find that once this happens to you, that every time you move into a new house, there's a, a period of, like, oh, my God, is weird stuff going to happen here? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I definitely think that, that there's that, especially, you know, if you're someone that's totally, you know, freaked out by that kind of thing, you know, then you're going to be paranoid from then on, you know. Is, am I going to be experiencing stuff I can't explain, you know, in my own home, which is, you know, not a good thing. Is there, a, is there like a time period of like a few weeks or a month where if nothing happens then you kind of start to feel safe or is it kind of always in the back of your mind that it might start at some point? Um, for me, I think it's kind of always in the back of your mind, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm always thinking about ghost stories and paranormal stuff, but um, you know, I, from, you know, my understanding of, of stories that I've, you know, been familiar with and people I've interviewed is that there's not really any kind of time limit. I mean, you may live someplace for 10 years and then all of a sudden something starts up one day, um, you know, and, uh, you know, one thing that can do something like that is remodeling. Like if you have a historic building um, and you start remodeling it, even if you've never had anything happen before, once you start remodeling, you can start having stuff happen at that point. Um, you know, and the, the theory with that is, you know, whatever entities, you know, stay in that location are not happy with the changes that you're making. So construction is, is liable to, to stir that kind of stuff up. Yeah. Wonder, um, are you going to say something, Elizabeth? No. I was going to say, I wonder if, it, I don't know, perhaps it's just kind of the, you know, a wrong assumption that older buildings tend to be more haunted. Um, I don't even know if that's true or not, but maybe if it is, that's part of the reason is that, um, you know, you do, you renovate it, you do work in there and it just kind of stirs up more activity. Um, I'd, I'd like to see some sort of study on that. Cause maybe, maybe I'm off base with that. Maybe that's just kind of a, um, something that people believe and it's not exactly true. I don't know. Um, well, I, I think that, uh, you know, there are definitely stories, you know, that happen in, you know, newly built locations. And the theory with that is that either some structure that they were, was there previously or some kind of history with the land itself can cause something to happen in a new um, structure. But I think, uh, you know, part of the reason, and definitely, there's, there's usually more stories about, you know, older historic locations. Um, and I think that, you know, like we were talking about earlier, if you're going to, you know, imprint, you know, memories into the energy of a place, um, that that's the more, you know, people you have in a location across a period of time, the more opportunities you're going to have with imprinting something on there. So it just kind of lends itself to, you know, more chances for that to happen. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I wondered, are you aware of um, any means to get rid of this residual energy? I mean, these patterns have been repeating, you know, since the 1800s. Is there any way, can something be done that it just stops happening? Does it take an event or, um, you know, how, how do you work that? Um, well, I don't, <laughs> that's definitely not my field of expertise, but I've, you know, read anecdotally and, and, and seen uh, people talk about um, that there's things you can do. You can get um, sage sticks and smudge, like there's a ritual that you can do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this is like a Native American kind of thing or um, more of a new age kind of thing. I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it, but you know, there's some kind of process to where you perform some kind of ritual um, that, you know, is 
letting this entity know that they're not welcome here anymore and that this is, you know, your house or whatever. And then you like put salt around the perimeter and that's supposed to keep it out once it leaves or, um, I mean, as far as, <laughs> you know, any kind of scientific, you know, way of dealing with experiences like that? No, not that I've ever heard of, <laughs> you know, but there are definitely ritualistic um, kind of shamanistic ways to do that. And some people say it works. And some, some people say, well, it worked for a while, but then it came back. And um, so that's definitely a, a big gray area. I mean, we I don't know. know what they are, so we don't know how to, you know, respond to them or, or manipulate them for sure. Mm -hmm. I know that in the Catholic religion, you can get like a priest to come and bless your house and they'll like spray holy water on your walls and stuff. And I've heard that that works. I've never experienced it myself. I've moved a lot for my job for acting and stuff. And I've always hoped that I would move into a haunted place. And <laughs> unfortunately, I have not. <laughs> So, and this place I honestly thought was going to be haunted, this place I'm in right now, because it, it at one point was an old folks home, and so, like, you know, oh, wow. there, there were people that passed here and stuff, and then when we moved in, we did so many renovations, I was like, this is going to stir something up. Never wow. did. Never did. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, funny enough, when I lived in, um, I lived in Bonneville for a while, when it kind of my first job out of college, and um, I worked for the the local TV news station, so I go around and do these little community stories, and there was one building it used to be a hospital back in like 1910 or something it was it was a very small building but I mean the town had like you know a few hundred people at the time uh, but it, the building had since turned into um, it was like a rental place where you could rent rooms um, I can't remember how many it was like six or something rooms you have in there and you know a few months later um, one of my, my friends who moved to town he ended up living there and we were sitting around and we were kind of hanging out with some people in his this basement room and and this topic came up and you know, people are like, yo, isn't it kind of creepy that, you know, how many people died in like in this building? And he's like, yeah, especially this room. It was the morgue. <laughs> so, like his like living quarters uh, used to be a morgue. And everyone's kind of like, ah, oh, that uh, kind of uh, creeps everyone out for the rest of the night. But uh, I don't never heard yeah, anything happening there. But um... <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'd be that brave to, to live <laughs> Um, so let's get a bit more into your book. How how did that all come about? Um, so, you know, after, you know, I had these experiences and kind of decided to be more open-minded about um, paranormal things, uh, I kind of, I didn't realize it was what I was doing, but I started, you know, collecting up these stories. You know, I just wanted to hear about other people's experiences. And so one thing that I would do when I would travel, um, I would find a local little bookstore and go in and ask if they had a collection of, you know, local ghost stories. And most places would say yes, you know, and so I'd buy that and that would be my souvenir for the trip. And I'd get to, you know, read and you learn the history, you know, of that place and you get to hear the ghost stories. And I just really enjoyed it. And, I, you know, I started getting a good collection of these kind of books. And I wondered why Athens didn't have one, you know, because I, you know, I had lived here since 1990, you know, and gone to school here and everything else. And I knew that uh, we had stories. I'd heard, you know, rumors about this and that. And I kept waiting for somebody to write our book, you know, like that. And nobody did. So I said, well, I'm going to have to write it. <laughs> so, oh, I, lo I love that initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely, you know, felt some kind of compulsion to do it I had to get it done and you know and I thought well I'll read it and then my mom will read it and that'll be the end of it and uh, but it turned out to be you know quite popular you know so in fact I'm working on a, a sequel now and uh, so yeah there's there's a lot of stories for this area. Wow. Did you find because even you know we're, we're from up here in Edmonton in Canada and I, I never thought that there would be any sort of that kind of thing you know, that, you know, that's, that's something that happens in England or you know in the you know <laughs> you know, the, um, you know, Connecticut or someplace like that. And, and once you start looking into it, it's like, oh my, there is a lot happening that, that you just, you know, you don't hear about on the news um, right. until someone actually collects those stories and, you know, here's a list of things that happened. So I imagine you kind of went through the, the same thing that when you really dig into it, no matter where you live, there's probably a whole lot of stuff happening that you're not aware of. That's absolutely right. I mean, and that's part of that taboo. So if you're just, you know, talking with somebody at the coffee shop, 
more than likely you're not going to talk about, oh, you know, well, I had this super weird paranormal thing happen to me, but I'm totally not crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless, you know, there's a, 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 you know, active, you know, some kind of active means of getting these stories out of people and collecting them where people, you know, can say, oh, yeah, you know, there, there are weird things happening in totally normal places all over the place. Hmm. Uh, right. Tracy, can you, what is your favorite uh, short story that you have in your book? Can you share that with us? That um, you collected? Uh, well, it, it's not, I don't know if you, it's not really short stories. It's mostly just interviews. Well, each chapter yeah. is, um, is about one place. And so the first half of the chapter is about the history of that place. And then the second half is about the spooky stories that are associated with that place. Cool. Um, so one of the ones that I already told you about with the man on the stairs, that's one of my favorites, just because, you know, that's, that's my favorite kind of ghost story is mm -hmm. where pe multiple people across a period of time experience the same thing because it's like you know this this guy you know that experienced this in the 70s has nothing to do with this person that experienced it you know in the 2000s and so you know what is the story there why is this you know re recurring in this place um but uh aside from that one of my other favorites um there's a hotel in town uh called the uh well, it used to be called the, the Foundry Park Inn. It's now called the Graduate Hotel. And it is uh, a, a historic, um, it is a historic location. And it, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on there. But uh, one of my favorite stories from that location is about a room where um, they, uh, it, a lot of people that check in there, they'll like come up to the front desk in the middle of the night and like, I'm leaving right now uh. and like wouldn't talk about why um or the the front desk would light up like a call was coming from that room uh, but when they pick up nobody would be there or they'd like ask the person were you trying to call the desk and they'd say no um and they just had so much trouble with those phones they they took the phone out of the room and they still got calls lighting up at the desk from that room even though there was no phone in it <laughs> <laughs> no oh my gosh no that's the same room too that um like in, and that that part of the hotel is right next to the road and if you come down that road like in the middle of the night the light will be on in that room even if nobody is checking. ah no so oh my i totally gotta stay in that room <laughs> yeah no thank you that sounds scary yeah, I would be that person checking out at like 2 a.m. being like, nope, nope, never again. I don't even want my refund. I'm out. Yeah. Also, this is weird. In another, there's a, a, a historic house that was moved to that property and it's it's rented out now. And there's a big sweep in the top part of it. And um, the the housekeeping staff will go in there and the hair dryer is just turned on, even though there's nobody in there. So they turn it off and leave and come back and the hair dryer is turned back on. So that's, I've never heard of that kind of story before. So that's totally weird. <laughs> oh. I wonder what these ghosts did before electricity. Like they just had yeah. so many fewer <laughs> options at their, at their fingertips. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess that's part of the uh, spiritualist movement when they did the, I can't remember what they call it, the table tapping or they lift the table oh, like the seances yeah yeah so yeah they were they were seem seemingly more limited <laughs> <laughs> so you um you were talking about a, a possible sequel to your book Ooh. yes it's it's been so much fun um you know when i after i finished the first book i had a few you know locations and leads that i didn't get to follow up with or i didn't have enough to you know get into a whole chapter um so i thought at some point i would get back to it and kind of you know see if I had enough to do another book and um so once I started with that that was um beginning of last year uh, it, it was just like an avalanche I got so many stories and so many locations and, and so the next one is going to be Ghosts of Athens and Beyond History and Haunting of North Georgia because it's <laughs> oh you're expanding <laughs> yeah I mean because I just kept getting leads like oh you know check out this place over there and I would get really good interviews and so 
I don't think I've got, you know, so much that I have to split it out into a couple of books, but I may have to see, but it's great. It's great stories. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited. And hopefully that's coming out this fall. So. Are they, um, do you have any, star are they all kind of haunting ghost centered or do you get into other types of things like weird creatures and UFOs and that type of thing? <laughs> no, um, I mean, I, I find those interesting personally, but just as far as, um, you know, m my obsession is mainly centered around, you know, ghost and spooky kind of, that kind of paranormal stuff, you know, especially as it relates to historic locations, because that's part of the fun for me, you know, when I'm working on a book and I get to, you know, do the research and learn the history about all these places and talk to historians and I, I talk to the university archivists, um, you know, on the last book and actually on this book too. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun for me to, to dig in on the history side also. Well, history is so concrete. It's like it's written down. It's agreed upon by so many people. So when you tie something so spooky and ethereal to something so concrete, I feel like it makes it more spooky. Like that's what I like about your uh, your theater uh, ghost story there with the with the curtain. It's like you and your manager both saw that at the same time. Like that is tied to like another person's experience too. That makes it way worse than if you were like, yeah, I saw this curtain do this thing. I'd be like, yeah, okay, but but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it makes a big difference if it's more than one witness for something, um, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, if it's just somebody, yeah, giving an account of a thing by themselves, you know, I, I would listen to it, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, our, our uh, last um, last interview, the guy named Jin, and he was talking about when he was on a trip in uh, Mexico and they saw some sort of UFO. And he's like, yeah, there, there was about 30 people on the bus. We all saw it and we got pictures and video of it. And I was yeah. like, okay, there's no denying that that yeah. happened. You can't claim that he's making it up when, you know, it's like you have that much corroborating evidence. Um, wow. Is, really, he gonna yeah. send you is he going to send you some of that evidence? Did we ask him that? I can't remember. I think we yeah, asked we, him. We asked him. He said, I think he said that it was all on like film and it, and like he doesn't have any of it so yeah this was back in like the 90s or something yeah so they... <laughs> yeah yeah that's a bummer you know but that's good like i said you know i always advocate for people to come from a place of skepticism because you know if everybody is just spinning yarns and you know no basis in you know reality then it's i don't think we're gonna it's gonna advance our cause of figuring mm -hmm. out what's going on that's honestly one of my problems with the some of those like paranormal shows you know there's like that paranormal caught on tape and i find you know the stuff caught on tape i find that interesting but you know here's a weird creature thing and they're going to ask a paranormal expert and another paranormal expert and another paranormal and of course they all say oh it might be the mythical chupacabra and i'm like yeah. ask someone like ask a hunter what is that thing he's probably going to be like yeah it looks like a, a wolverine you know like find like at least accept the possibility that it's not paranormal, but they only go for the most outlandish kind of ridiculous. And that should be the last resort after a hunter is like, I don't know what the hell that is. Talk to like a park ranger. I don't know what that thing is. Then start going to like the weird mythological creatures. But when they kind of just, that's the first thing they jump into is um, even like Morgan was saying, you know, like, you know, hundreds of years ago, every single illness, everything was a ghost, a ghost, you know, it's a spirit. Right. You know, and his medic, you know, medical science advanced. It's like, no, it's you know, lung cancer. You don't have a demon in you. This is something right. that's prevented. <laughs> exactly, and, yeah. um, so you kind of got to look at it from there, and you'll be willing to. And you, know, of course, being a flat out denying that anything is possible is ridiculous either, because people have seen these things. They, it's been documented, and they can't like. There's no way. There's no way the 30 people on that bus colluded together to lie about seeing UFO. It's and then fake right. the pictures. That's ridiculous um mm -hmm. so you kind of that's kind of what i want to do with the show is kind of come in and be like i'm on the fence about it but i want to hear other people's experiences see what they think and yeah you know, that's great maybe the last episode we ever do with a show i'll finally make a my own personal judgment <laughs> one way or the other <laughs> i think part of the problem too is some people you know that are interested in these kind of stories they just you know, if they've never had that kind of experience, they really, really want to, or, you know, they just 
they just want to jump on the bandwagon. And so you kind of have to filter out, you know, filter some of these stories through that lens, you know, because some people that I talk to and then, oh yeah, and the ghost was here today. And well, you know, it's like, well, you know, I know you're excited and want to be, you know, part of that, but please, you know, making stuff up isn't <laughs> Helping. Yeah, when when Brandon and I talked about doing this podcast, that was the one thing we were like, we need to research the people we bring on first so that we know that they have some credibility <laughs> or it's going to get out of hand. <laughs> well, Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show. I wish you the best of luck with uh, with your new book. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Awesome. So what do you think about that, Elizabeth? I thought that was awesome. She seems like a really... Um like kind woman like I just feel like she's so soft and kind and stuff it's it's nice to listen to to her voice and to her stories I like that yeah it was um I, mean, she, I got an email from her and she she heard about the show and was interested in in coming on and she actually um said that she'd been been following us before just from our, our movie career stuff which I found uh, quite surprising that oh, I always find it so weird that people I mean I know kind of in the back of my mind that people are watching our movies, but I don't really think about it. So it's so weird when some stranger yeah. is like, I know who you are. And it's like, really? I uh, know. So cool. <laughs> it is so cool. And like restaurants and stuff. And people are like, oh, hey, I know you from this. Or like, like, how's this going? And I'm like, whoa, you know way more about me than I know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Paranormal Phenomena Podcast. See you next time.